for me. Uh, it's lovely to be out of the house. Um, the guy I'm living with at the moment is a bit of an arsehole. Um, I don't know if you've had these awful flatmates. You know, they never do the dishes. Uh, this guy pees with the door open. Uh, keeps jumping into my bed at five o'clock in the morning asking for a cuddle. <laughs> he says that I shouldn't call him flatmate when he's technically my four-year-old son. <laughs> <laughs> I think the wee man needs to step up a bit, you know, start paying some rent. Um, so I'm a separated parent that does most of the childcare, aka a single mum. Woohoo! Any, any parents in, by the way? Yay! You're on your night out. Don't fall asleep. <laughs> I know this is nice and dim and cosy in here. You try and stay awake and enjoy this, okay? Um, so yes, the single mum, a very misrepresented category in the mainstream male gaze pornography. Um, just to say, there's a lot more housework in the reality um, and it's, it's a weird double life trying to learn to like parent a small person and then date again because like day to day with a young child is quite tiring and um, my son's lovely obviously i love him very dearly but he's only four and young children don't have empathy yet so you know it's me 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 me, me. none of my needs all his needs so um he's basically a narcissist <laughs> and at his age, obviously, you know, he can't fully express his emotions correctly. That's, that's not his fault. He's young. So he has a lot of tantrums still. Um, and also what's happened, uh, he's discovered he's got a penis as well. <laughs> so that's a lot of fun when there's no dad in the house. So uh, going through the natural bodily exploration, all good. He's a bit obsessed with his penis, but fair enough. So that's day in and day out. And then if I finally sit down and have a swipe through the blooming dating apps, single straight available men in their 30s and 40s, um, emotionally unavailable narcissists obsessed with their own penis. <laughs> <laughs> Just the same. <laughs> some very deep belly laughs from some of you there. You know exactly what I mean. So if you are any single people in, single than that, eh? Uh, aye, so as we know, the dating apps are horrendous and um, they bring out a new one and they say it's going to be different, but they're all the same formula, the same algorithm, so I don't think they are different. Like, I think Hinge, which is a new one, is to Tinder what pret a is to McDonald's. <laughs> like, it's just the same shit but repackaged for the middle classes. <laughs> Um, so I got so bored of them, I then went down the kinky dating apps route. Um, Woohoo! <laughs> Any kinksters in? No, just Brian, just Brian. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I, I will say, I will say, I, I just want to say for the kink scene that so much more honest. On your vanilla dating apps, it's like, I just want to like vibe with someone who likes the same music as me and has the same hobbies as me and then maybe like casually see each other for a while and eventually meet my soulmate. Um, the kinksters know, straight to the point. They're like, strictly nostril worship. <laughs> Honestly, they're, they're just like, 24 seven lampshade, me and you. I'm gonna be your lampshade pal. <laughs> they just cut out the bullshit. That's what I like about them. So uh, from that to alternative, sorry, I'm kind of shouting into that. Um, from that to another alternative scene, I randomly took myself to a tattoo convention on my mum's day off the other day. Very random considering I have no tattoos and wasn't planning on getting a tattoo. <laughs> for, for my pal's history of bizarre things that Sophie does, just turn up at a tattoo convention. For me, it was cool though, because I could be like a Louis Theroux and see the subculture that I wasn't part of. And you know, it was amazing to see so many people who identify as looking alternative, all in one room, you know, <laughs> looking exactly the same. Yeah. Um, no, no offense to anyone who has tattoos. Express yourself as you will. But there was a lot of big burly men actually being tattooed, which was like all around, which was a new experience for me. I hadn't seen that much hairy Scottish back flesh since me and my ex-husband turned up at a spinner's club at three o'clock in the morning in North Glasgow. <laughs> uh, so it was an experience. Um, and uh, yes, another experience that you have to do as a parent is children's birthday parties. Has anyone done this to parents? Oh my goodness. 
because there was a pandemic, I'd never had to do it before until this year. I hadn't really done like a proper party for my son. So I was a bit nervous and I was like, oh God, how am I going to do this party? But then I remembered I worked in hospitality for many years in Glasgow. Uh, specifically at some hard house raves at what was then called the Carlin <laughs> Academy, now the O2 Academy, till about six o'clock in the morning with a couple of my friends up there. Uh, so I thought, right, I'll just transfer my skills from the raves to the kids' party. <laughs> like, you know, like what do you need for a good party? I'm thinking, okay, um, you need some like banging beats to get everybody jumping. Like, okay, fair enough, it's going to be a little bit more baby shark. And a little bit less, doosh, 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 hardcore till I die! <laughs> but it's the same, you know? So you've got the music, and then what else do you need for a party? You need, um, well, fill everyone full of sweeties, and they'll get hyped up and jumping about, you know? <laughs> and that's for the kids and the ravers, so that works. <laughs> uh, and, and finally, the hardest bit of any party, the end. So 4 p.m. at a children's party, everyone's had too much fun, They've had too many sweets. Mommy, I don't want to go home. No, I'm not leaving. And, and this is actually very similar to 4 a.m. at the raves in Glasgow. So like all these sort of like big Glaswegian men are very loved up and they've had a great night. And they're just like, stop. I don't tell you how often, how much I love you this often. But I don't want this night to end, stop. I'm not fucking going home. One more tune. And we had to get these guys out, you know? And then I thought, ah, there's, there's a t technique for this. It's called the party bag. You know, remember when you were wee, you'd go to a party. There'd be an adult at the door with like a wee plastic bag with maybe a balloon, a slice of cake, and like a little plastic toy. That was solely a method of making all the children leave, by the way. We didn't realize this at the time, but very, very clever. And I thought, why didn't we have those for the raves? We should have had the security guy with like a party bag for the ravers. Like, what would they have? Like a bottle of water? Yeah, maybe some chewing gum or something. And a wee plastic toy, because they're going to be up all night anyway, aren't they? Um, and just before I go, I would like to finish on some topical material, or rather, I was going to finish on some topical material. But then I rem remembered that. Um, I haven't really believed anything I've seen in the, mu in the news um, since about 98. Uh, <laughs> and, and that thing, the thing that I believed in the news was I genuinely, genuinely, with all of my heart, really, really believed that the Benga bus was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I really, really thought that everyone was jumping. <laughs> so, fake news, guys, I was disappointed. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys! Oh. Give it up one more time for Sophie Rose McKay! Thanks, <laughs> Buxton. Bangle Boys. I really wasn't expecting Bangle Boys at Spangle, but hey, anything goes. How are we all doing? Yeah, good? Aye. Okay then. Well, the sad news is Les Johnson and me can no longer appear tonight due to illness. Aww. But we have a mighty substitute. <laughs> now, I think he'll need a little bit more encouragement than that. We have a mighty substitute! <laughs> And I mean, very, very last minute, like two hours before, Showtime stepped into the breach. Um, his band, our timeless folk pop, uh, recently released an album called Small Wonders, available in all digital and physical formats. I was lucky enough to have a copy thrust into my arms when waiting to cross the road at Kelvin Bridge. And that in itself was a, was a small wonder. I was waiting to cross the road. So I was running to Morris with a vinyl and thrust it into my arms. And, wow, that's service for you. <laughs> anyway, without the band tonight, but equally as special on his own, welcome to the stage, Warren McIntyre.
Thank you, Paul. Thank you all. Hello. 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 So, these are the towel, excuse my hair, you know, I've been doing this in here just for the years, and she's really, really busy. I had to be three months in a year, can't see her really short. <laughs> I was making some of those kind of, I thought, oh, what I'll do is just find some prop backstage to completely distract <laughs> attention away. <laughs> So I'm going to play, I'm going to play, I'm going to play here, I'll start with a nice little slow, okay, I'll start off with a nice kind of, this is the most popular song on Spotify. Oh, I'm 
This is not a good technique for me, I wish I'd never started it, and I wish I'd never started it on stage in front of those people. I've done it now, so I'm going to have to get into this song in some kind of tasteful, artistic way. This is no rehearsal for you, for me, for anyone. And we go slow again. This is no rehearsal for you, for me. I just took him head, the reason it like is, I met this someone in dance club on stage, and somebody took a photograph of it when I was a kid, and uh, I never got a copy of the photograph, and I wanted to get a copy of the photograph, and years later, I did my band attend, you know, touring, so I didn't get the photograph, and then I thought, how can I get a photograph? I'll put on a concert, if you're going to put on a Miss Moon concert, put on somewhere good, so I booked the concert hall, and I did a Miss Moon concert. And as we tuned up, this song's called Number Five. <laughs> I pretend that this is because it's a last minute stand in, I'm doing this all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Anything is made better by the male brothers. I'll just wait for Warren to sell, sell his wares here in his barrel stall. Um, how are you all doing? Hey! Welcome back. Hello if you just joined us. If you have just joined us and haven't been here before, we are monthly alternative variety night and have been for 15 years. Um, different show every single month. Right now, it is time to meet someone who specializes in experimental gothic trap hip hop. Yeah. Try saying that on a Sunday. Experimental. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, something entirely different and um, is joining us in a collaboration, us being Scudder. And we have a brand new EP on the way about the coffins of Arthur's seat. Anybody heard this? No. Good, you'll have to wait for the EP and come to the EP launch. Basically, in 1836, 17 tiny coffins were found under slate on Arthur's seat by a bunch of boys hunting rabbits. And still a mystery to this day, many, many theories. And, uh, the most recent one being that the figures in the coffins were effigies based on the victims of Burke and Hare. Um, so yeah, that'll be coming to a place near you soon with one track featuring our next act. But anyway, tonight is all about her music, experimental, gothic, science fiction journey. Welcome to the stage, Somnia! <laughs> Got it! 
So they agreed to be Scotland's second <laughs> number two, right? but probably only when I'm there, right? Because they're quite small and, and, and she's got a stick and I get it, no problem, right? So <laughs> probably when I'm not there, she's Scotland's number one dyslexic poet, but when I'm there, she's number two. So I've been doing this now for 45 years. Let's hear it for being alive for 45 years. There's no point, there's no point to just get applause all the time for doing nothing, right? So uh, I've got a few jobs to allocate. Uh, Chris, I've got something special for you. Later on, you're going to teach people the words for tartan underpants. Right. Because I noticed that Chris actually likes tartan underpants. He's got someone tonight, so you're going to teach them that. <laughs> uh, the table, the table's trying to, trying to look away now. I need someone to, uh, you're waving, that's, that's uh, you then. What's your name? Yes. Correct! Well done! That's right, you know, he goes his own name on it. So, uh, what we're doing is I'm going to do five poems tonight. So I just need you to count how many poems I've done, is that okay? 
And they, what are you laughing at, cheeky monkeys? It's because I've actually got a brain injury and I forget stuff. Uh, so, always, so what could, what could happen with the brain injury is I could just forget the whole thing and be off in two or three seconds, which goes down quite well. Or I could be here for several hours, okay? Uh, which, and normally they just shuffle me off and give me a cup of tea. So I'm going to do five points, so you can count them, that would be great. This table I've got to take a photograph, okay, of me, preferably. So I can send it to my wife. She sent me out, this is the invisible wife, doesn't exist, called Anna Banana. She sent me out for milk on Friday, I haven't come home. <laughs> get my photograph, would be good. And at the end, remind me, remind me to take a photograph of the audience to show her where I've been. So when I say she sent me out for milk on Friday, it's a bit of a joke. She didn't. She puts me into a care home for the weekend, which is nice. And Paul had to sign off, to sign me out for the weekend. And they said, you can have him as long as there's no funny business. So stop your laughing. Okay? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the first poem. I must admit, having done this for 45 years, I don't have swearing in my poems. I don't do anything political. But because I only have a few more months to go in my life, <laughs> I've decided I'm going to be an angry grandfather. I'm going to both swear in a poem and do something political. Because you've got to express yourself and just let it go. So this first poem, you got it? Number one, right? This first poem is called Boris Johnston is a cunt. Yeah. So, if you're going to fucking good one, no? Actually, it's my mum's favourite. She's 108, she loves this one. So, here we go. Boris Johnston is a cunt. Ready? Boris Johnston is a cunt! Yeah. And for my next poem, I'm going to tell you a little bit. Uh, this, this is a true story. I actually took the bus today. I've got a bus pass and it gets me on free. And um, I got the bus down the other week to do a gig in Dundee. And it's a bit like comedy and poetry. Timing is very important. So if the gig starts at, like, say, 7 and you arrive at 9, that's really bad timing. So I get the bus pass, go down there and I get a table. Four young people come along and say, Come and sit here. Yeah, no problem, sit there. Uh, so they don't they, like, like normally, young people tend to ignore me until after the gig, right? So I, I got to do the gig. And I come off and I go, wow, wow, I said, have you ever had sex? And I said, well, it's very kind of you, but I've only got half an hour if I get my bus. And it's one of you, right? But been, I'll give it my best shot. Not many two days warning, but I could get worked up. But can, can we start with the girls first and just see how it goes? And they said, no, no, we don't mean that. We mean it's just so bald, so fat, and so fucking stupid. We think no one's ever shagged you before. You would never get sex. And of course, I was offended. I've actually got five children, which is true, which warning can justify. I don't know my wife, by the way, one of them. <laughs> so uh, I have got five children, and they said, really, do I? I do, I do, I do. So they said, when did you lose your virginity? When, and I said, well, like, young people ask an older gen. So my generation, it's not normal to tell people when you lost your virginity. So I did feel a bit embarrassed and a bit shy. So this next poem, poem number two, is called July 1976. Yay! <laughs> Our first kiss. <laughs> Fiona Robertson. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say that, no, I said, uh, I said, Biona Bobertson, I said Biona Bobertson. So this is, uh, this is called uh, 1976. <laughs> Still got it, boy. That's why it says there, brace yourself, do you see that behind the bases? That's cool as fuck, if anything's interesting. Right, so, I've only had that in 1976. I might have two rides for the price of one. Right, so, uh, our first kiss, 1976. Our first kiss was so delicious, we moved straight on to sex. It was fast and furious. I was fast and she was furious. <laughs> we never kissed again. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, then you have to do some work now because I get tired out. I'm going to teach you the words, if I can remember them. Oh, there's three words. I'll teach you the first two words. They also get to do the punchline. It's not often the audience get to do the punchline, but we'll do that towards the end. I'll teach you it then. The first thing, the first word is, uh, I say, I've got a rocking chair. And you say, it rocks. You got that one? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's practice. Because some of you look really sharp and some less so. <laughs> right, uh, so uh, I've got a rocking chair. Yeah. Oh, that's quite good. 
Then next line is, I've got a sock. It rocks. It rocks. It's socks. Now, some people are big enough to say rocks out loud there. But actually, it's, it's socks, right? So, I've got a rocking chair. It rocks. I've got a sock. It socks. You've got it. I'll teach you the punchline later, okay? Let's do it. <laughs> I've got a rocking chair. It rocks. I've got a sock. It socks. Me on the jaw like an old American movie often seen on TV with Adam West on his Batman vest. And Robin, who just sort of hangs around a bit like a scrotum. Right. <laughs> That's the next line for you, is the scrotum, okay? So I want you to give me your best scrotum, think of your own scrotum, or the, your fav most favourite scrotum you've ever seen, or witnessed, or felt, or you can even do this, and you do it if you want, it's up to you. But just think of your best punchy, a punchy scrotum, not a flippy floppy scrotum. It's got to be really thrusty all together. Thrust your scrotums at me all at the same time. Real or imaginary. A bit like scrotum. Oh, that was a really wishy washy scrotum. You really, what happened to this dynamic? You're like, rock, sock, scrotum. No, it's really got to be scrotum, really. A bit like scrotum. Yeah, yes, I did some actions there, yes. In fact, madam, you were so far apart that was two scrotums. Well done. Like, hey. Give the back. Let's turn over here. Right, so, let's write the whole thing now. You can rock, sock, scrotum. Got it. Right. I've got a rocking chair. It rocks. I've got a sock. It sucks. Me on the jaw like an old American movie often seen on TV with Adam West in his Batman vest. And Robin, who just kind of hangs around a bit like Scrotum. Give yourself a round of applause. Well done. <laughs> True, I do actually have a brain injury and get mixed up, which is why I can't rehearse any of this stuff. So, uh, right, I've been doing uh, poetry in schools this year, which is nice, uh, because I've learned Scottish poetry in January, February. I've done three and doing four, is that right? Yeah. You are mixing me up, right? <laughs> I'll just do whatever you tell me now, I'll be here all night, I'll just get off. Right, I've done three. Oh, right. He's got a technique, a technique to it, right. So, um, Poems at school, uh, which is very nice, and uh, they call me Silly Sid, and they get to be very, very stupid. Normally, with 200 kids at a go, it's great fun, but I never get asked back because it's the best assembly they've had in their entire lives. But the bar's very low. And, uh, <laughs> and this is called Mrs. Polythene, and I, I get, you get the children to count body parts of the invisible lady. Does that make sense? Mrs. Polythene is visible, there's body parts, they count them out. I did do a gig uh, last year, actually, in Kirk and Killick, of all places, which I thought would be a nice place. And it was a family show in the afternoon for charity. There's a family there, and I said, you've got to count the ladies, the invisible ladies' body parts. And there's a family, and this small boy shouts out, VAGINA! <laughs> and his mum's there, and she's hitting him. I fucking told you before, don't call it a fucking vagina. You'll never get your fucking whole corner a fucking vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just someone soon. <laughs> and his little brother's there, he's like, his little brother goes to his dad, can I shut out clitoris? And, <laughs> and mum's like, what has he about clitoris for? He knows, he's never seen a clitoris in his fucking life. So, uh, so I just did the poem. And, I was, <laughs> and they actually came up with answers, right? And they got the answers completely wrong about the body parts. But I was so petrified, I gave them the prize. Which I thought was only fair. Which actually was a, a, a rubber clitoris. So good. Uh, the pointy arrow. So, right, so the idea is you can, count, you can count the body parts of the invisible lady if you wish. Whatever you come up with will be the correct answer. Has anyone seen Mrs. Polly Thien, the incredible invisible woman? Although she's never seen, she is very clean. Mrs. Polly Thien, the incredible invisible woman. She's got invisible eyes, invisible nose, invisible feet with invisible toes, invisible hair with invisible bows, and where she lives, nobody knows. She goes to the cinema and gets sin free. She goes to the theater and gets sin free. She goes to the Bar, sometimes called football, 
a Yetson free to be invisible. I wish it were me. She's married to a plastic bag who calls himself Bin Liner. Her friends, they are all double glazed, or nothing could be finer. Has anyone seen Mrs. Paul Dean, the incredible invisible woman? Although she's never seen, she's very clean, Mrs. Paul Dean, the incredible invisible woman. To her children, she's transparent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I got the bus down today from Aberdeen, my free bus, and I've got two more gigs in Glasgow. Uh, what day is today? Sunday, so Monday, Tuesday, but I get in Monday, gig on Tuesday. If you go onto the social media and find me, you'll find out where it is. Otherwise, it's a secret and you can just bugger off. <laughs> and uh, that's my PR. And uh, the best way to get onto I am on all the social media stuff. The best thing to do, because nobody can rem remember my name, Sid Ozolid, is to go onto YouTube under Sid TV. That's much easier. And you find me there, and then four, excellent, last one, excellent. You're going to follow me around now. See, I've got, I've got two, I've got two bus passes. <laughs> <laughs> one for my dead dad. They look very similar. Right. <laughs> I'll just carry you in a box. Oh my god. Okay, right. right uh, what we're doing? Oh, so to your photograph. That's what I've got this out for. So uh, I want you to put your hands up and go woo, uh, as if you're having a good time. And my wife's getting this right in the face. Right? <laughs> Ready? Big hands up, big woo! Woo! You idiots! <laughs> <laughs> what if it's work? <laughs> Maybe I'm the issue. Right, okay, so here we go. So this is the last one, this is called Tartan Underpants. The most important thing I teach children at school is if you're wearing a kilt, get underpants of the same tartan, wear them under the kilt, and people will still think you're naked, but actually you've got nice, cosy bits and pieces. <laughs> and uh, Chris likes this a lot because he wrote about it wrote to me about it on Facebook. Can you remember the word for the audience? Uh, ooh. ooh, that's it. Ooh, so your line. <laughs> he's, he's going through the whole thing now. <laughs> so your line is ooh. Have you got it? Ooh. Now I've got to be honest and say I actually have handouts. I've, I've printed thousands and thousands of handouts to the school kids with different poems on the little cartoons and stuff. And they wouldn't hand them out because. Uh, there's a naughty line in this, this poem, which wasn't naughty when I first did it for families in the 90s, but now it's really naughty. Uh, and it says, there'll be no hanky-panky in my tartan underpants. So the word hanky-panky, apparently they couldn't hand out, which is fair enough. So the, the um, deputy, the head mistress lady spoke to me, because we can't put this out, and so I was like, it's hanky-panky. Oh, yes, yeah, so. And she's really nice, and I thought, yeah, you're fucking. Right, so, uh, um, I said, okay, I wonder if you change the word. So I had to give her a different, so I had to, it's cost me a fucking fortune and stuff, right? So uh, I had to change the words. I gave her options, right? And she decided in the attachment of pants, it'd be okay to say, have a little wanky instead of, uh, instead of panky panky, which I think sums her up. And, I, uh, <laughs> and, then, and then I realized that I'd actually shagged her granny, but I didn't tell her that either. So, so what I'm starting to do, and I'm trying to work out hand actions to do to, and get invited back into the school. So it's not just poetry, it's poetry with hand actions. And I'm going to practice the actions today. And if it works on you, it's going to work on a bunch of nine and ten year olds. <laughs> if all you've got to do is mention pants and they love it, oh pants. But uh, we'll practice you a bit. So I say tartan under pants, you say ooh. A bit ooey, a bit ooer, ooer, please. Please get in touch with your inner underpants for this, okay? Tartan underpants, ooh. With some nice pants in the house tonight. <laughs> Turn on the pants with actions. They are groovy. They can dance. They can put you in a trance. That's my tartan underpants. <laughs> tartan underpants. <laughs> tartan underpants. <laughs> you can use them as a tent. <laughs> I know it was good, it was, it was good, but it wasn't that good. It was pretty good. <laughs> you can use them as a tent. <laughs> Use them as a hanky. One thing is sure, there's never hanky panky in my tartan underpants. <laughs> tartan underpants. <laughs> tartan underpants. <laughs> I don't drink whiskey. I don't eat haggis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of the haggis supper there. That's not going to work for the kids. Maybe work for the headmistress. <laughs> 
I'm not that, bro. I don't, I don't drink whiskey. I don't eat haggis. That's better. <laughs> I go to bed with a girl from Paris in my tartan underpants. <laughs> tartan underpants. <laughs> tartan underpants. <laughs> My pants are funky, they know what to do. Oh, funky, they know what to do. Goodbye, boxer, shorts, this is the Y <laughs> front crew. That's a crew cut I had in the Y front crew in my tartan underpants. <laughs> tartan underpants, <laughs> tartan underpants. <laughs> I just come down from the Isle of Sky. I'm nobody big or a wee bit shy. Lassie shout as I go by. Sydney, where's your tracksuit? I let the wind blow high, let the wind blow low Through the streets my pants I'll go All the lassies shout, hello! Sydney, where's your tracksuit? I'm out some dancing And they are groovy, they can dance, they can put you in a trance. So that's my tartan underpants. <laughs> 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 I've got to sign five poems, so I'm finished. If I had a really long, elastic arm, I'd give you a high five. But I don't. So I'll just, hello, thanks for my big cat. Really good, right? So I think I finished now. My time's up. My name is Sid Oslid. You will find me on all these social media things. And uh, Warren will be playing another gig in my garden this summer. You're all invited. If you know Warren, you can come. If you don't know Warren, you can just fuck off. <laughs> but between now and the summer, it's a good time to find him, right, on social media, buy his album, and then come with him up to my house yeah. for a gig in my garden in the summer. It's a big garden, isn't it? It actually is. So I think that's me. Anybody in the room who's maybe 45 and below, this is a bit of advice for you, and then I'm going away. So I must thank you all very, very much. <clears throat> 45 and below. Some in here. Not, not everyone. You may think I'm a dick and a bit of a fanny, but remember this I'm at Shag your granny. Thank you very much, and the best for you! Give the applause, go out the scene, all the way! Just give me a guitar, Warren. Mm. I can move your harmonicas too. <laughs> <laughs> song for this. It's got a good song for picking up flows, but not for picking up this way. Just talk amongst yourself. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, how are we all doing? Yeah? Good to see you all here, good to see you still here. We are now the first Sunday of every month. And next month lands the night before that coronation nonsense. So um, we'll be having some kind of a anti-party, yes? We have some ideas in mind, fear not. But anyway, if you're off the next day, no excuse for being here. Um, as you may have guessed, it isn't anything goes, all kinds of everything kind of night. If you do have a performance, you can email spanglecabber at gmail.com and we may or may not get back to you. <laughs> Meanwhile, it is time to welcome Scotland's number one drag abomination! <laughs> People of set cafe bar on a Sunday night. It is time to witness 
Maggie Cavalry. We've taken another cheeky, tiny 10 minute interval, and we'll be back with the final section of the show. Thank you. Yay! How's everybody getting on? Excellent. Just uh, kicking some uh, body of Christ off the stage. Um, yes, welcome back. This is Spangled Cabaret. Um, so there was a plaque revealed in Paisley a few days ago at the Gallows Green. Um, this plaque has a QR code which tells the story of the harrowing Paisley witch hunt. Um, it links to video stories, etc. Um, I'm in a band with David called Scunner. Uh, this is a song we did a few years back about the Paisley witch hunt. Oh, 
never pardoned, but now there is a plaque for the QR code for future generations to learn the story. Okay, as you are. Who's ready for some burlesque? Oh, you are thirsty. Well then, we want all of your whoops and powers and encouraging noises as the next performer hits the stage with a brand new act. <laughs> Ladles and jelly spoons, welcome the quaking, shaking, heartbreaking, bump and grind sensation that is Kim Chaos. <laughs> Something over there under that mic like, stand. The what where? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. David's on it. Cool. <laughs> what was that track? Um, I don't know. Um, 
recognize the voice, but couldn't do it. Okay. Yeah, I think it is. Well, the sad news is one more performance to go this evening. But the good news is the bar's still open. If you want to stick about and after party the shit out of it, because <laughs> Sunday is the new Monday! Yay! Yeah. So, uh, round of applause for the acts so far! Yay! Round of applause for David on Sunday Light! Yay! Round of applause for the set Cafe Bar team! Yay! Round of applause to Kate for taking your money! <laughs> Everybody else involved right now, for a second time tonight, we close. The one and only Puke! Burns would have approved. Uh, that is your whack. 
My name is Paul Puppet. This has been Spangled Cabaret. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you very much.